What's up some fans around the world and welcome back to another video. So it's update time again on the rear wheel drive build. I don't upload the update videos on the build as frequently as I'm out in the garage just pushing in hours in building this car and getting done with it. But we have some exciting updates and rather than just showing updates I'm actually going to show some work that needs to be done right now. So if you follow me on one of the social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram you would have seen that I have assembled a few parts on the engine already. The block we built in an earlier video and what I have done right now is I have added the timing chain if you are new to the build. I have also deleted the balancing chain so it's only the timing chains. So we got all the new guides everything is Saab original parts. If we can get focus. So I want this build to to be able to take some real power so I went with the OEM kit that you get with the timing chain all the guides all like o-rings and everything here is a few pieces from the kit as well new things all around the engine so that has been assembled i have sealed off the the plate on the side i have installed my home build oil pan on the engine and seal that off as well so we got clearance right here for the steering rack and I think I mentioned in the earlier video I tested the the volume of the new oil pan and it could take a little bit more than six liters so an improvement in 1.5 liters which is really great I have made my own like oil filter removal kit. Here is normally the, the oil filter so I made a plate with A and 10 fittings that has been welded on. So these fittings just sit here because I wanted to show off how, how it could sit like so. I think it came out really nice actually and it fits so so well. The only thing that you need to consider is the, the cross pipe that goes from one side of the block to the other. So I actually got piping that fitted the cross pipe perfectly right here. So it comes out quite a bit and then comes the AN10 fitting. And the other issue that I had was how is the oil going to be for the oil supply for the turbo. So my body Gerard suggested this solution and it's awesome. So now we got a connection for the oil into the turbo as well. And the block of course has been machined. So in today's video we are going to install a new gasket and L-Ring makes the best gasket for these engines hands down. So all the gaskets I have for this engine right here, here we have the head gasket L-Ring, here we got the intake gasket L-Ring, here we got the exhaust manifold gasket also L-Ring. So that's what we're going for because we want a tight and really sealed engine. And one of the big updates is that I got the, the cylinder head back from P.R. Johansson who has done an, a tremendous work on this head. This is like by far the cleanest and best head I have ever seen and the best I have ever had. It's almost like you don't want to install it because it's so clean everything. So everything has been apart, it has been blasted so it's really clean and nice. All the surfaces have been machined. 
you can see down here it's like mirror finish and all the valves has been grinded the seats has been milled so everything fits just 110 percent and it's so clean all the way around and i installed one of these plugs because this is normally an uh, area where it leaks from the cylinder head so that's really nice to seal that up so in today's video i'm gonna lift on the head install the gasket install the head studs which i have down here and we are going to torque everything back into place we are going to install the valve cover that i got right here I just did a quick little job sub power quite neat little modification and we are going to install the t5 cams so they have a little bit higher lift and longer duration so that will be perfect for this build right here so t5 cams t5 t7 head t5 bottom end so it's a hybrid engine and we also got a lot a lot stiffer springs if we can focus on that so they will not float or whatever you call it when you rev really high and the cylinder head has been reinforced as well you can see this brass screws in the middle between the, the cylinders here you have stability where the where the spark plug sit but between you have like hollowness inside of the cylinder head so when you get really really high pressures the the, the cylinder head could actually flex a little bit so this has been reinforced so now we will have zero flex now it will hold power very very good and this is definitely nothing you need to do when you run like 250 300 horsepower this is like for higher output engines so you don't have to be like worried oh i don't have this reinforcement on, on my engine will it blow up no it will not so that's what we are going to do today so let's just get to work and then we have a lot more work to do but that's a start at least So the head studs that I'm using right here are 12.9 quality so they are very similar to ARP studs so I'm just threading them down in the block right now make sure they sit really really tight So these are from another Swedish company and they come like blank bolts so I did a little cut in the in the top so I will be able to, to thread them down and make sure that they sit really nice because you really want them to bottom out before you start torquing them down
Then I just drop down the washer and the nut. So now all the nuts and washers are just threaded on and just hand tight down. So now we are going to start to torque this down and we start to torque from the middle. So since this is 12 9 bolts or head studs and not the original head studs, then the torque specs are a little bit different. So here we start with 20 newton meters and we start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we go like the clockwise around and start from the middle. And we start with 20 newton meters just to get a little hold of it, then 60. Then normally you would do like 90 degrees with the original head studs. But now we are going to torque them to 110, 120 newton meters of torque. So we start with 20 and we go to until it says click and no further. Because then you will have the wrong, the wrong torque spec. Now we will change to 60. So now we will change it to 110. So this is actually recommended to go between 110 and 120 depending on how thick the block is so you won't damage the cylinders or drag up the threads. So 110 then the first time we will we have driven the car you should lift the valve cover and re tighten every or retorque everything once again once the engine is hot Like so, now everything is torqued down, felt really nice, so if you are worried and it doesn't feel correct you might be want to check that out, but now it's time to install the T5 cams. So we're going to start with installing the exhaust cam and it's really important that you keep the order of these and make sure they sit the right way that they were before. And you also need to make sure that the engine is in TDC and that's mean top dead center. So you can see on the pulley down here you have a little notch and you get a notch in the cover these should line up together then you are in top dead center then when you have installed the, the sprocket on the camshaft you could actually see a little marking when it's 
in the, the correct spot where it should be. So I will show you that when we when we have installed it. You can see it right here. There you have the little notch as well. So this should line up. So first I'm going to install it and I'm going to use some engine oil that I will be using later to lube it up. And then we will just screw the the fasteners down a little bit before we start to torque them and these should be torqued to 50 newton meters of torque which is like nothing same here I have set the torque to 15 we start in the middle and we go out and like I said this is like nothing so you have to be pretty gentle So now we are going to install the cam sprocket on the side and this should be torqued down to 63 newton meters and it has like a groove or a notch right here and a groove right here so it only fits one way. So you can hold the camshaft with a 19 millimeter at the same time. That was 20, so now we're going to change to 63. Now we will just take the chain Ah, oh, now I remember You need to undo this, put the chain on first, then torque it down So we will do it again We will take the chain, 
and drag it up as much as we possibly can. Make sure the sprocket sits in the right place. Like so. I said as tight as possible and now we will thread this back so as I said it's important that you get the chain down here up to here as tight as possible and make sure it sits in the right spot so I will show you the notches to look for they are at a few different places. You can see one is in the actual sprocket right here or the cam wheel right there and that marking lines up with the marking in the camshaft and also right here. So then you know that the timing is correct and next up we want to get the chain as tight as possible to the other sprockets so now I will just do everything that I did right here on this side so now we got both camshafts installed the T5 cams and you can take a look at the timing right here you see the notch and same goes for the exhaust and what you really want without having the markings or the notches to look at you want to have the tightest chain from the lower sprocket up to the top one so here it should be really tight then between the exhaust cam and the intake cam it should be really tight like it is right here and the eventual slack that you will have on the chain will be down here let me show you so here the chain is slacking and that's why we insert the tensioner right here that takes up that little slack then we will have a really tight timing chain so the tensioner is just two parts First you have this part right here that pushes the chain and you have a little spring that pushes it out. So you install these first and then attach this that will push it in. So if everything is correct done right now we should be able to spin the engine without problems, without anything interfering. I'm going to set it back to TDC you can see it's still tight everything went really smooth around no real big issues so what we are going to do now before we install the valve cover back we are going to pour some oil over the cam just to make sure that it's a little bit lubed up when we do the first start or before we crank it for real like so and now we are going to put the valve cover back and I have prepared that a little bit So when I started filming I attached the new gasket with just slightly a bit of silicone underneath. So now this has 
laying down curing for a little bit so when we flip it upside down hopefully it will stay on and not come down I have also changed this plastic part right here after a few years in oil and heat it gets like to solid plastic and that could make the chain rattle a little bit so we will fix that or we have changed that so now it's rubbery and new so hopefully this engine will perform really good I have not spent a hundred years getting the nicest valve cover but I think it turned out pretty okay for what it should be so now everything is tight everything is sealed it looks so promising with everything but I have one more thing that I would like to show you so I got this little gadget right here recently it's from Vivor and it's a pretty famous company you have probably heard of them um, regarding their diesel heaters that's very popular especially in Sweden in the winters but this is a little inspection cam and handheld endoscope so you get the gauge right here so you can film with it take videos you could take photos or you could just do a live control so it's very very easy to operate it comes with I think it is a 32 gigabyte SD memory card so you and you have a USB socket if you want to hook it up straight away and you got five meters of camera so here we got the little camera and you got like LED lights for those hard to get to places so this is really really simple I have not like tried it for real just yet I have only unboxed it and have a little look but this cable is like flexible so you can move it and have it looking wherever you want to and this is so handy when it comes to engine builds who haven't looked for a 10 millimeter socket at the end of an engine build like this and just wondering where it went so all you do is you plug this in at the top and you push on and it lights up and voila you have camera so here you can turn on and off with the light so you see very good. So we could do a little test and just see what we could find. For example if we go into one of the cylinders we can extend the cable a little bit let's say you have like an engine problem this fits perfectly down into the cylinder now it's black so we turn the light on and the picture is so clear and it sees all the details 
I don't know if you can I'm gonna set this down and make sure that it could focus on the camera you could actually see that it says like sob on on the side of the on the on the piston right here and it's perfect to check if you have any cracks or anything you might wonder why it's like getting like white smoke then this is the perfect tool and you get a super sharp picture and we can have a look inside of the other cylinder as well and you can look around and if the light is too bright you can turn it off or you can even get even better lighting so this is really nice all with this little camera right here so this would be very very helpful for a lot of things so when I'm installing my clutch it will be very very useful let me just show you really quick so when I'm going to install my clutch later on it needs to have the the perfect space between the throw out bearing and the clutch plate or the pressure plate so then this will come in really handy because on the back side where the where the where the lines go in this camera will be able to fit perfect as well so I can just push it through and then I will be able to have the best of views for how the, the clutch plate will sit next to the bearing so this will be very very useful in the future so this will be a neat little tool that I really will use in the future Let's say that you have a rattling from the engine and you want to inspect the, the cam transmission and all the guides and everything without removing the engine, without removing any cover or anything. Lift the valve cover, put down the camera and you will be able to inspect down there without any problem at all. And you will be able to diagnose your car in like no time. So the good people at Vivo has been kind enough to supply a discount code and some links so they will be in the description box below. And that's it for this video. I want to thank PRU Wanson very much for the work on the cylinder head. Everything is coming along really nicely. I have done so much work on the car that's not like visible or not showing but it's prepared so it's just a few things that we wait for I wait for the front brake calipers but now I will start to work on the clutch and the transmission then we will lift the engine and everything back into the car and try to get everything assembled with the exhaust manifold intake manifold all the lines all the hoses so very very soon I hope that we could get a first startup and a first touchdown of the car so I think I have quite the momentum on this build right now so I'm very very positive but it's just the hours that needs to be put in if you have any questions please leave a comment down below otherwise subscribe to the channel it means a lot to me and I will see you in the next one bye